You want my real name then? Yes. My name is Brian Alderman, and I played uh, the wonderful role of Mike in Oklahoma. And I sang in the chorus. Oh, I am Bernie Bilal, and I directed and designed the show. I am Julia Cochran, and I was a dancer in Oklahoma. I am Caitlin Couch. I'm a sophomore, and in Oklahoma, I played the role of Ado Annie and did a small bit of choreography. My name is Rachel Dupay, and I was an extra slash townsperson in Oklahoma. My name is Megan Harris, and I was a singer and dancer in Oklahoma. I am Isaac Hendricks, and I played Fred, one of the cowboys, dancing cowboys in Oklahoma. I am Joanna, and I was the choreographer slash emergency dancer, dancer in Oklahoma. Um, my name is Tegan Hughes, and I was a main dancer in Oklahoma. I am Caleb Julien, and I played the role of Curly. My name is Crystal LaPlu, and I played Aunt Eller in Oklahoma. My name is Brandon Lawrence, and I was a chorus member and Dream Curly in the Dream Ballet. My name is Josh Lieber, and I was just a singer and dancer in the play. I didn't actually have a name. I am Rachel Liebert, and I was a dancer and a chorus member, and in the Dream Ballet, I played Lori's double. My name is Grace Lowe, and I played Lori in Oklahoma. My name is Austin Marsh, and I played the role of Will Parker. I'm um, Lydia McNeil, and I played a townsperson. All right, I am Shelby Metz, and I was Kate in Oklahoma, and I also tap danced. Uh, my name is Caleb Morgan, and I was uh, Cord Elam, the federal marshal in Oklahoma. Uh, I'm Matt Redding. I played Judd Fry, the bad guy for Oklahoma, and I died. Hi, I'm Alex Reese, and I played Gertie in Oklahoma, aka the girl with the really annoying laugh. My name is Nathan Ryer, and I played Slim slash Jim for the production. I am Rebecca Runner, and I was an extra slash dancer slash townsperson in Oklahoma. Uh, I'm Chase Smith. I was one of the farmers for the play, uh, chorus and ensemble. My character's name was Tom. My name is Andrew Warren, and I was Andrew Carnes in Oklahoma. I am Lysi Ray Wheeler, and I was the stage manager for Oklahoma. I'm Nicholas Wellbanks, and I played Ike Skidmore. Uh, most definitely the auction. I got to stand next to my good buddy Slim, who just was really hurting whenever the bid went up to six bits, and that was a lot of fun, trying to encourage him to bid higher. Boy, that's a real difficult. I think probably I really thoroughly enjoyed uh, The Farmer and the Cowman. Uh, I thought that was just a rousing uh, opportunity for all the people who were involved in the show to really shine. Well, I really enjoyed all the songs because they were really fun to dance to and I enjoyed it. My favorite part of the musical, if I had to choose only one, would probably be Farmer and the Cowman because of all of the intensity. But so, um, a scene that I always get a lot of adrenaline in is when Gertie comes back and her and Ado Annie kind of have it out. That was always a fun one as well. Uh, my favorite part was probably Scandal when all the boys would go walking out because backstage all the girls would be having a dance party and the song was hilarious. I guess All or Nothing, I really loved Will and Ado Annie's characters and how they interacted. They were super funny. I think that the first part when Will first gets back and he's telling the whole uh, town about all the things he did in, in Kansas City, that was that was a pretty fun, that was a really fun scene to do. and. Mm, Four Judd is Dead and Kansas City. Uh, I'd say the dancing and the choreography it was a lot of fun to do uh, since I used to dance in musicals all the time. My favorite part was probably entering every night uh, singing Oh What a Beautiful Morning because I got to come in and I got to see the audience reactions and kind of warm them up almost and then as I got to enter in I got to see the set revealed every single night. My favorite part of the show on the whole was during the men's dance break in The Farmer and the Cowman when, fa when um, Caleb would consistently make this face. My favorite part of the entire thing, probably when Dream Curly kissed Dream Lori, um, but that was just, that's just me. Probably in scope of the whole thing, um, the finale was kind of fun. Um, A, because I got to actually do stuff in it, um, but B, because everybody Everybody's kind of singing and dancing together. 
I mean, it was fun. And it being at the end of the show is probably uh, the most emotional part of it for a lot of people. Well, I really enjoyed the fact that we could uh, we insulted the Cowboys a lot. Uh, that was a fun thing for for just our side of the farmers. We, had, we really enjoyed that. Uh, but I just really enjoyed the fact that it was just a lot of dancing and singing, and I really enjoy those kinds of plays. Just dancing is a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I really didn't like the musical that much when we first started, but as it, like, it was the, the people that were in it that made me love it. Um, I think my favorite part was just um, Aunt Eller and her scene with the peddler in the beginning. Like so many of those lines in there just made me laugh so hard. I think my favorite part was when I got to yell at Judd Fry, that whole scene from then into the engagement with Curly. That was so fun. That was a really fun scene. My favorite part of the show would probably be the Dream Ballet, just because it was so atypical and it was honestly the part I look forward to the most, um, even if I was just barely in it. And just the fact that Rachel and Brandon actually played the Dream Laurie and the Dream Curly really made it um, more emotional than it um, could have been if anyone else played that part. And I'll be honest, there were some moments where I was holding back tears on stage because it was just them and it was so perfect. I don't know, I liked a lot of different parts of it, but I think, um like Ada and his character was my favorite and I think just the whole um, end part of it when like everything was resolved and just seeing the happy ending with all the different couples and everything was really cool. I think it would probably have to be Kansas City. I think Kansas City was my favorite part of the whole thing because it is just a lot of fun. <laughs> I would say probably just like the large group scenes where we were dancing like Farmer and the Cowman. Those are some of my favorite scenes. Just being able to do everything as a large group was really fun. Probably the finale when we all sang Oklahoma because that's capturing the spirit and essence of the show in one musical number and it's so good you don't just hear it once but you hear it twice. So that's probably my favorite part. There's two. Either in the ballet, uh, the dream scene, when uh, Brandon and Rachel get to dance with each other and it's before Judd comes out and she's like leaning on his chest and they do this cool lift that's really precious and then also um, when the real Curly and Lori um, actually get engaged. Those are my two favorite parts. I would have to go along with Austin's answer. Um, the Dream Ballet, it just had a lot of these moments that were unexpected. It was a lot of fun and it was just really cool visual um, with the mirror scene and the smoke machine. Um, it was probably just my favorite visual. Context-wise, um, Kansas City was probably my favorite because it was a lot of just fun, energetic, interesting acting and a lot of dancing and that was fun. I really, really liked The Farmer and the Cowman. Cause that's just, it's just a fun song to do. And then Oklahoma at the end is just classic. I guess my favorite part was getting to um, act in it with the former castmates of mine. Uh, we had done The Diary of Anne Frank last year and it was just really refreshing to get to act with them again. I enjoyed my scenes, um, especially um, getting my daughter to marry the right person. Um, but I, of course, Curly defeating Judd and becoming the right um, honorable um, prospective person for Lori um, was honestly the, the good and the best part of the story. Is that I really liked the Dream Ballet. It was a lot more intense than I was expecting it to be. And when we got the fluff machine working, it was very ethereal. My favorite part uh, was probably the whole scene in Judd's smokehouse. That whole interaction between him and Curly was great. And then uh, Lonely Room, his favorite song. I think probably uh, at the end, let's see. Is it, uh, is it Cord who pushes the sheriff uh, into the seat and says, we're not gonna let you, so shut up, as he like pushes him down and knocks everything over, and the pots are rattling and stuff. That was probably always my favorite. My favorite line in the show was, um, when Curly jumps up on the, uh, windmill and says, hey everybody, I just, uh, uh, Lori Williams is my girl and 
She just got me to ask her to marry her. This is so stupid. My favorite line was when Aunt Ella called um, the peddler a little wart. <laughs> oh, definitely uh, the scene where Curly proposes to Laurie and she says yes. I've always loved his reaction where he says, oh, I've got to figure out how to be a farmer now. He just kind of turns his life around to accommodate her and her family um, and kind of go into her way of life which I guess kind of makes sense now that he sold his horse and his saddle and everything he needs to be a cowboy. Okay, so this is probably not a great line to say in real life, but when Aunt Eller would scream the hussy, I always got tickled and had to control myself <laughs> on stage. <laughs> At the end, where Ada Laney is trying to beat up Gertie for Almost kissing Will. I think my favorite line is when uh, Will says, I'm trying to get her from stop killing your wife, and the peddler says, mind your own business. I mean, it's a simple, short line, but it's just so funny. Well, talking about a series of lines, uh, probably with um, Ali Hackam when he's talking about all the trouble he's gotten himself into with... Uh, Ado Annie, and that um, he's now finds himself uh, upset at the whole world for the way that um, gals get their husbands. <laughs> Nathan's line where he was like, and we'll be the horses, because it makes absolutely no sense. Probably the line that Shelby said at the end that uh, there's time for. There's times when women ain't got no need for men. It would have to probably be uh, Carnes' line, you feeble-minded shock poke. In terms of what's actually written in the script, my favorite might be when Andrew Carnes comes out. All those lines, what are they? Help me remember them. He comes out with his gun. Oh, 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 I got it. <clears throat> uh, who the heck are you? That was one of my favorite lines. Well, shut your face or I'll fill you so full of whatever, whatever. I don't remember, but it was so funny. Probably my dear friend Mike, played by Brian Alderman, uh, uh, asking, oh, what was her name? Asking Ado Annie if the same sweet potato pie was in the basket. And she said it was. He said, well, I give me a three-day bellyache. Had to be when, well, there's two that are, that are top lines. One of them is with Caleb and Judd. Uh, I guess it would be Curly and Judd. When they're singing their song together, and it's the poor Judd said song, and Judd says, now he's gone for good, sings it out, and Curly leans over and says, good. Not very many people in the audience got it, but it killed us backstage. The other one, was when, uh, what was, what was, Allie Hackham, that's when Allie Hackham came in and walked in on Judd uh, and that, later in that scene, and Judd is talking about how he wants a woman, and Allie Hackham's like, well, what about Ado Annie? And Judd turns around and goes, well, not that one. And then Allie, go, Allie Hackham goes, well, I don't want her either, but I've got her. Oh yeah. So Crystal goes, do not call me Aunt Eller. I am not your Aunt Eller. I am mad at you. That's my favorite one. I think my favorite thing that I got to do was when I got to yell at Judd. That was really fun. I just got to like start shouting and it was great because I don't usually do that in real life. My favorite line from the show. That's a good question. I never got asked that. But I guess if it was my lines, I would say it was from the scene when it was just me and uh, Bailey, who played Allie, the peddler, and I had to go, well, nothing. I know what to call you. You ain't pretty enough for a skunk. You ain't skinny enough for a snake. You're too little to be a man, and you're too big to be a mouse. I reckon you're a rat. Um, I think all of us just had a lot of fun with Ado Annie's line in the song, Can't Say No, when she was like, spit in his eye? I think that was just a fun line and a lot of people quoted it to me afterward. Caleb comes in and is like, why don't you look behind you, you crazy woman? 
I like that line. <laughs> my favorite line was probably um, when Aunt Eller asked my character, uh, told my character Cordelum uh, that she, it, that regarded that she didn't care whether I'd actually been my character had actually been carrying on with other women. It would still make me feel funny. I guess anytime I screamed like. It's the line where it's the line where Judd goes, um, I ain't good enough. Got dirt under my fingernails, got pig slop, and just freaks out. That was a lot of fun to do, actually. Uh, probably uh, when Carnes is talking to Ali Hackham and Ado Annie, Ado Annie's there, and um, they're talking about how Ali Hackham's been sweet talking um, Ado Annie, and Carnes is like, I'll shoot you so full of something that your behind will be so I don't know and you'll walk like a duck for the rest of your life or whatever that one's pretty funny my favorite line was probably you feeble-minded shack poke because that always got a laugh out of the audience and um, uh, it was just always comically delivered and just silly probably I really like Aunt Eller's lines especially her calling um, the peddler man a wart Probably the line where Curly is talking about where uh, Lori gets gets him to ask her to marry him because Caleb, the guy that we had planned, that a friend of mine, he it took him so long to get that one. He kept uh, saying, "Got her to ask me to marry her, marry me," stuff like that. It was it was just good fun. I really have to say it's the shut your face or I'll fill your behind so full of buckshot you'll be walking around like a duck for the rest of your life. Just very, very meaningful. Uh, I gotta get a quick kiss and it's gotta be quick or I'll jump in a crick and die. I thought you was somebody. Definitely, definitely dancing uh, with the guys too many a new day. We had this really stupid dance where we just kind of bobbed up and down for however long that song was, 10 minutes or whatever, and we laughed at each other hysterically every single night. Probably. I don't have a lot of offstage memories because I wasn't backstage, so I'm gonna skip that one. Yeah. My favorite offstage memory definitely was before um, all the performances when we would all gather in a circle and pray together. It was really special to have everyone, um, everyone in one spot talking to God before the show. It was a lot of fun to to kind of uh, work out the kinks that can't be worked on in a rehearsal backstage while others were going on. So I, whether it was the Oklahoma hello or the fight scene or the hey, um, or anything where there were just small interactions, kind of like getting to spend extra time with people off stage. During, I can't remember which performance, but during one of the performances, Brian Alderman came running up to me freaking out because his cowboy boot was broken. So we had to sneak backstage and find safety pins, and then Caleb Julian came in and said, wow, I'm really glad I saw you. I was about to rip my pants off. So I'm glad that that did not happen. <laughs> and I haven't told anybody that until just now. <laughs> During the It's a Scandal song, uh, Many of the girls backstage danced to it, and it was so funny, especially Rachel Dupay and Rachel Lee Burt just cracking me up the whole time. Dancing with the guys during the, um, the girls' song. And rehearsals where everyone got a little slap happy at the end, so. Would probably be um, every time Caitlin would run after Alex and she'd shoot the gun and one night she tripped over the, the hay and we just couldn't stop laughing about it. Every night during the Dream Ballet, uh, before we actually entered, when the girls were all just singing, uh, Brandon, myself, and then Rachel from across the stage would all kind of just do this little dance number every single night. Let me just recite it to you. Don't let your tongue wobble around in my mouth. That would have to be during many a, many a new day while the girls are all on stage singing and we 
the guys in Scandal are getting ready. I think I, I believe that was the song. It was many days. The guys uh, that are in Scandal, which was one of the next upcoming scenes, all backstage did the stick dance. It's kind of like this. <laughs> so we all did that backstage. I thought the times when I wasn't lying down. It had to have been just the fact that Brian and I were dancing a lot backstage. And we taught Caleb Morgan how to dance too. We had him hit the whip. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I got all the guys like breaking the, breaking the stick. It was just, it was a lot of, a lot of dancing backstage too. That was just, we're, we're, we're white. And so made it, made it really funny. My favorite off screen or off stage, I guess, memory was all of the dance parties that happened backstage. Like we would be on stage right and that some of the guys would be on stage left and we'd just be dancing to whatever was going on on stage. <laughs> I guess just getting ready backstage with the other girls and all scrambling to get all of our hair done and our makeup done and panicking that we wouldn't get done in time and just having a really good time backstage. Actually off screen, I'm trying to think if I have anything that was off stage. I don't know, we always danced really fun, like really crazily during the Dream Ballet when we were off stage. That was usually fun, but I wouldn't really call that a big off-stage memory. Nah, I ain't got one. That's good. That's good. Every single time Scandal came on, all of us girls um, on, one, on one of the sides of the stage, we would all start dancing just really weird and we would dance um, backstage the whole time to Scandal. Probably every night during It's a Scandal when all the girls were backstage and they danced through the whole song. <laughs> it was really funny. It was, it was a shame everybody had to miss it. It was really good. <laughs> I, I guess it would be the time that I didn't get on stage in, uh, uh, before the curtain opened. I was backstage with uh, Allie Hackham trying to help him figure out how he was going to do his uh, money for an upcoming scene. And the uh, curtain opened before I got out there and I had to wait and just sort of jump in, in the middle. It, it was actually pretty fun though. Dabbing. Just any time. It was always like this, backstage all the time, I promise you. So that was awesome. When uh, It's a Scandal was going on and all of the girls who were just on for many a new day and then they're about to go back on to pull the guys off stage, they're all on the other side of the stage. But um, I had a scene soon, so I was back there with Curly about to come on and um, they would be dancing, and then I would be backstage dancing too, and then we'd all start dancing together and we looked like idiots, but it was really fun. <laughs> Probably my favorite off-screen moment was just moments were just the dance parties that always happened. Whenever there was just people backstage, we always were just dancing and having dance off between the wings. Um, that or just the, the terrible singing that we did behind uh, in the in the auditorium when we were waiting for our cues, we would just sing along quite badly and it was a great time to, to come together. And Oscar Monday, it was really, really nice to, um, during Tech Week, to all be downstairs and to just congregate down there and, and lip sync with the other characters as they're on stage and we all sang um, I Can't Say No all together downstage. That was lots and lots of fun. I guess one memory that really stuck was uh, just, you know, being able to talk with people off stage, getting to know them better on a deeper level, stuff like that. I can't really nail it down to one specific. It was just good to get to know people better. Um, I guess it was the last night when we were thinking of awkward things we could do to potentially spice up the show. And I had mentioned I have this shirt that the buttons come undone. Um, kind of easily, and I called it a stripper shirt, and so you could rip off the buttons, and I thought it would be funny, comically, if I was going to do something, I would, at the very last song, when everyone's saying, yow, that we would just rip the shirt off, and there I am in my undershirt, so that was kind of a funny afterthought that we could do. During, what is it? 
Many a New Day, and then It's a Scandal, when the guys would be backstage dancing to Many a New Day, and then the girls would be backstage dancing to It's a Scandal, and watching you both do it was hilarious. And I tried to get a video, but the lighting was bad. Definitely the, uh, the dance that we all did. Brian Alderman, uh, he invented this dance um, for all the guys to do off stage while the girls were singing Many a New Day because we were all in the next song, so we were just in the wings. And uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> uh, fun. For me, the hardest part was probably just the time commitment. I am new to the theater department. Uh, this was my first and only play that I've ever uh, been in, and so having rehearsal every single night in the midst of the other things going on was, uh, was pretty crazy. Um, you certainly can't count on much time to get anything else done other than rehearsing for the show. Hardest part was coordinating um, the design and construction as well as the rehearsals. Um, that's always a, a big challenge for me. The hardest part about this production was probably um, all of the elements of the lines and the acting and the singing and the dancing. Um, for me, the hardest was uh, getting my songs and hitting all of the notes that I needed to and knowing how to control my voice, but it was definitely getting everyone else's talents um, and everyone doing things they weren't necessarily used to and making it a whole show. Uh, the hardest part for me was learning the dance moves because I have never been in a musical before and I've never done anything like that. So that was challenging, but once I learned it, it was really fun. I think it was just remembering all the cues and um, dances because, I mean, I'm used to learning dances, I'm a cheerleader, but just all of that at one time, different styles, it's definitely a challenge was probably just getting um, everybody to make it go smoothly since there was such a big cast. So there were so many people to try to get there all the time. And, and probably since we ended up not having a lot of the cast members until the last few performances and trying to help them get in and, and make sure we all knew what we were doing. Mm. Training myself to be productive after 5 p.m. again because I don't do that anymore. I think the hardest part about this production was getting everything and putting it together at the end. Like everyone had the lines and everyone had the music and everyone had the dancing but putting it together the, the week beforehand was it was tough but I mean we we definitely got it together. For me it was the singing. Uh, it was out of my comfort range. I am more of an actor than I am a singer so I really had to uh, just step out of my bubble and uh, learn just to be really comfortable with it. I don't even read music, to be honest, so it was, it was a lot of work to put in, and um, on top of that, it was out of my range for a lot of it, uh, so I had to really extend my range, make sure I was warmed up every night in order to hit the notes. Climbing up on the roof at the end for the cast picture, which I still have a scab from, by the way, <laughs> it really sucks. It also keeps hitting everything. It keeps bursting open. I'm bleeding everywhere. But you had to help me up first time, and then getting back down was its own separate challenge. Honestly, it was a little hard to get over my pride and just be in the ensemble, if I'm gonna be honest. But it turned out to be really good for me, um, and I just, I really loved hanging out with all the girls all the time and making up little backstories. Um, yeah, it just turned out to be really good, but it, it was hard for me to adjust to just being one of the ensemble. The hardest part about the production was all the time that we put into it and the huge time commitment. For the plays that we've done, usually our rehearsals run more like two hours, maybe two and a half, but for this show it was three hours every single night, sometimes more. All the dance rehearsals, all the acting rehearsals, and the music rehearsals. It was so much work, but it was worth it. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that there would be so much dancing in this. And when we first started the dance rehearsals, I thought this is never going to happen. But it took me till about the week before to finally master a hill click. And that was a good thing since there were like 12 of them in Farmer and the Cowman. So that was probably the most difficult part was learning how to do a hill click. 
I think just the time and the energy that was put into it, because um, we spent a lot of time in rehearsal for dancing, for um, chorus, and for the acting. So all of it took a lot of time to put all the different parts together. Ooh. I'm gonna have to say the dancing, just because there was so much of it, and then also having to sing while dancing and not be like out of breath the whole time, that, that, I'd say the dancing. I would say probably, I would say probably like the, for, for me it was the choral uh, aspect of it because I'm not a singer and so it was learning how to match my voice with others pretty much, it just, it was very uh, unusual for me, but I, I ended up getting to where I could do it, so it was pretty fun. Singing. <laughs> It was my first musical, so I was definitely like, uh, crap. For me personally, um, I'm more of a music person. I mean, I'm a vocal performance major. So um, getting used to just having lines and just acting and not really being much in the chorus at all and, and being a real character, even though I was small, it's new for me. And it's fun, but it's challenging. The singing for me, I'm not a musical person. Um, I initially auditioned for a very small role in The Sound of Music. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you're, you're singing, you're dancing. Deal with it. The hardest part about the production was probably the choir rehearsals. Because we had so many people who weren't necessarily in choir. So teaching them how to sing and then putting us all together to sound like a real choir worked it was really hard, but it worked really good, and we had a really good turnout in the end. I'd have to say the hardest part was the fact that a few of us, a few of the cast members, that was their last production here. My friend Caleb Julin, Andrew Warren, Crystal LePlew, you know, it was all their last ones, and Brian Alderman, his first and last, and, you know, it was just great to be able to do this with them, and great opportunity. You know, they're all great people, and I'm going to miss them. I think the hardest part would have, was honestly making sure that we, um, we were flexible with all the different um, directors, because there was the dancing director, uh, Mrs. Hill, and then Dr. Cardona, and then Mr. B. So Dr. Cardona, you had to make sure you knew all your music, and then with Mr. B, you had to make sure you knew all your blocking, and with Mrs. Hill, you had to make sure you knew all your dancing moves, so it was just a little bit different and a little bit more intensive in that aspect and so just being flexible with that and being flexible with what they're telling you and learning what they're going to tell you. The curtains. <laughs> just getting the curtains right and keeping everything straight. The singing, definitely. I, I've been told I can sing but I never really learned how and I can't read music so it was tough especially with some of the notes Rodgers and Hammerstein like making the men try to hit. I think my favorite mistake was when um, Austin's character, when, when Crystal would stand up and fire the shot to get everybody to shut up at the auction, Austin's character would drop his gun every time and then would like point it up through, um, through Curly's legs. And one night, <laughs> Curly stepped on the pistol uh, and then Austin picked it up and it actually fired as he was lifting it up to, uh, to point it at her. So it was hilarious. I don't think anybody caught it, but we all joked about it after the show. Uh, working with the guns <laughs> and, and getting them to go off at the, at the appropriate moment. That was probably, a lot of mistakes were happened with that one, so. Probably my favorite mistake was um, the first time Aunt Eller hooked the peddler with her cane around the neck and he just started laughing. Oh, I think it was just during a rehearsal. Uh, it could have been a dress rehearsal, but the scene where I take Will's gun to chase Gertie off stage, he had a lock on it and I did not know you could lock the gun into the holster. And so I went to pull on it and it wouldn't come out. And so I just stomped my foot and I said, give it to me. And he said, no. And so that was just a fun interaction because nobody knew what would happen. And so it was just kind of how he handled it. It was a blast. When Caitlin couldn't get the gun from Austin and she ended up just like, he was like, no, you can't have that. Like that was hilarious. Like the way they covered that was awesome. Even though that was just an address rehearsal. So that part. Okay. So one night in dress rehearsal, um, when Aunt Eller shoots her gun off at the 
party, uh, everyone froze, and um, Brian Alderman froze like right in front of Shelby, like butt and face, about to fall on her. And it was just so funny because Shelby couldn't quit laughing. And so Aunt Eller, <laughs> she called Shelby out in the middle of her big spiel about, this is a party. So that was really funny. We laughed forever afterwards about it. Probably when Drew Warren accidentally said that um, he was going to let your tongue wobble around in my mouth instead of wobbling around in his own mouth. <laughs> I wasn't even there for it, but everyone constantly was repeating Andrew's line with the tongue wagging around in my mouth, so. Um. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's tech, it was technically a mistake, but um, when uh, Crystal would shoot the gun, Austin would always point her gun up, and one night, Caleb uh, stomped the gun down, nothing happened, and as soon as Austin picked it up, it fired. So during uh, the Farmer and the Cowman, when uh, Ann Eller steals my gun, she, she pulls the gun and fires in the air and Austin prudently pulled his, uh, his own revolver and aimed it at her. Uh, and that en ensued with a little conflict between him and I as I tried to get him to put his gun away and not shoot Ann Eller. So I, I stomped his gun down to the ground and uh, it was fine. And as soon as he picks it up off the ground, fingers not even on the trigger, it fires. Uh, and he had this look on his face of, I just, and he just about shot my foot off. And so the audience had this amusing, they laughed, those who saw it laughed, and um, everybody else was very confused as to why another gunshot had fired out. And he hadn't even done anything, just picked it up. The consistency of Caleb singing at the wrong place in The Farmer and the Cowman. Gosh, which of them? Um, oh, huh. it's probably a tie between two. They both have to do with Austin's gun. Um, first one would be when he pulled it out during the auction scene when um, Aunt Eller has, <laughs> has Carly's gun out. Um, and he pulls it out and then Caleb Curley would go to step on the gun. Well, the one time he did that, Austin went to pick it back up and the gun went off and everybody thought that Aunt Eller <laughs> shot somebody. Uh, but it was kind of freaky. Um, the other second one, pretty close tie, uh, would be when Ado Annie went to grab um, Will's gun. And this is funny because this was the first day when I, well, Austin came to me backstage while we were downstairs over in uh, the band room. And this was a night after the dress rehearsal when his gun consistently was falling out of his holster. So I took the little the little tie rope thing that's designed to be able to keep your gun in the holster and I fashioned it for him so he was holding the gun on and he was like, oh, this is great, it's not gonna fall out. Well, he forgot to take that off for that scene so Ado Annie is yanking on the gun and it's not coming out because I tied it pretty well. Um, and uh, she ended up just running off stage I kind of changed some of the lines, but I just thought it was funny. Me and Austin thought it was funny. Don't know if anybody else caught it. It had to have been when Crystal came in really, really loudly on the Territory Folks Should Stick Together song. And it was just like, Territory Folks! And then she realized that it wasn't the right time to sing that line. And it sort of like joined the little just like, ah. I did that too, except really quietly, so nobody heard me. Because I was really unsure of where I, if I should sing there. But she was full blown, and so it made me laugh. My favorite mistake, and probably a lot of people's, was when Austin's gun went off after um, Aunt Eller shoots the gun during Farmer and the Cowman, because Aunt Eller was like, I should probably react to this, but I don't know how, and Austin was just like, ah! It was so funny to watch that happen. <laughs> My favorite mistake had to be on opening night during Farmer and the Cowman, after Aunt Eller fires her gun, and then half the cast ends up on the floor. I was one of those that did. And the funny part was, Caleb, who played Curly, I always landed right in front of him. Um, and sometimes my gun went in, would end up between his legs, which would frighten him because he didn't want to get shot in a particular place. Or I would land on the side. The first night, I did land on his side, and so I cocked my gun, 
and then had it pointed just like this across him. And then for some reason, he just felt the need to kick the gun out of my hand and slam it on the ground with his foot. Now immediately when he picked his foot up, I go to grab it, because of course Will's gonna go back after his gun. He's not just gonna leave that thing laying there. Go back to pick it up, and right when I grab it, it fires on stage. Just goes off. Um, so we both jumped, because it both scared us, and we stayed in character, and it was absolutely hilarious because the audience loved it, and it never happened again. It was just one of those one-time fluke things, but it was honestly one of my favorite moments, even if it was a mistake. I think, I guess it was a mistake during rehearsal, so it wasn't during the actual show, but so many times during rehearsal, um, like when we were actually running through the show, there was one part in the song Scandal again that, um, the guys couldn't get, and it was, it's supposed to be every daughter has a father with a gun, but most of them would sing every father has a daughter with a gun, and I just thought that was really funny. You know, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of any, but I know there were, because there always what? are. Because <laughs> there always are. <laughs> My favorite mistake was uh, when Matt Redding called Aunt Ella and Lori, uh, Aunt Lori, and then Aunt Ella got on to him in the show and uh, told to told him, "You want to run that by me again?" <laughs> it was really it was really hilarious. Um, <laughs> well, definitely would have to be when Bailey screamed out when he was supposed to do one goodbye. Woo! Goodbye. My favorite was probably when uh, we were doing Farmer and the Cowman and Austin's gun fell and um, Curly stepped on it and then Austin picked it up and it, it shot off and I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> that scared me so bad, <laughs> but that was probably my favorite. Uh, being the one putting this together, I know that one of the most often cited mistakes is uh, when Andrew slipped up and said, now hold on. Don't let your tongue wobble around in my mouth. <laughs> and I, I have to agree with him because that was my favorite mistake. <laughs> it all, like, if you watched the entire cast during this, everyone just avoided eye contact with everyone else because we would start to smirk or grin because we were all thinking at, the, at that part. My favorite mistake was, I think it was Wednesday night, and Andy Annie goes and grabs Will's hol holster or Will's gun out of his holster to go after Gertie. And one night it was clapped in to shut. It was clapped in shut. And she tried yanking it out and it would not come out of Austin's holster. And she tried for like 30 seconds and we all just had to react and it was a blast. Uh, there's a few that I liked, but I'd say my favorite one was probably whenever uh, the guns kept going off whenever they weren't supposed to, and sometimes not even that during rehearsals. <laughs> so, yeah, that was funny. I think the uh, favorite mistake was actually a line that I said. Um, I was talking to Curly, and I wasn't thinking when I was speaking my line. Kind of sped up, and I was saying, uh, don't let your tongue wobble around in your mouth, except I said, don't let your tongue wobble around in my mouth. And... Uh, that's kind of an interesting, terrible mistake to make. Don't let your tongue wobble around in my mouth like that. The favorite mistake was probably when Adu Annie accidentally switches Will's name with the Peddlers uh, in their first scene, opening night. And she, she's supposed to, she was supposed to say to Will something to the effect of, uh, oh Will, you make up pretty things to say, but instead she said, uh, oh, Allie, you do make up pretty things to say. To his credit, uh, Will rolled with it and it worked out okay. They got back on track, but... Uh. Oh, this was my first time dancing on stage. And to be quite honest, I loved it. It was, it was so much fun. Um, I felt <laughs> unbelievably white and out of rhythm, but it was, it was a blast. No, it was not my first time dancing. I danced for a long time before this. It was my first Brian production, and I thought it was a lot of fun, and I definitely would do it again. This was not my first time dancing on stage. I just got out of a ballet recital. Um, I've always danced um, 
But I definitely loved the way that Joanna uh, kind of followed the style of Agnes DeMille, uh, who was the original choreographer of Oklahoma, and it was just very quirky and folky, and it was, it was advanced enough for it to look like a good performance, but she broke it down easy enough for the non-dancers to be able to learn it. So I was very confident about the way the whole stage looked during the dances. This was my first time dancing and it was crazy, but it was really fun. And um, I really liked the square dancing scene. That was my favorite. In a musical, this is my first time dancing on stage. I did ballet and tap for nine years beforehand. So I had a feel of the stage and how it kind of worked, um, but not exactly the style dancing. I mean, there was some ballet and tap, but especially couple dancing was a little new to me. I think it was just so much fun and a hilarious production, a lot dirtier than I thought it would be, but <laughs> it was really funny that Brian was putting on this production. It technically was the first, uh, not the first time I danced in front of people, but on like a big stage, yes. Um, I thought it was, it was fun. I was really bad at it at first. It took me a while to get it, but once I got it, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I thought the dancing was great. I thought the choreography was inspired. Um, but in all seriousness, I was really proud of everyone who worked really hard, especially those who hadn't danced before, so. I thought it was great. Um, not my first time dancing on stage. I've done multiple musicals where I danced. Um, the choreography was really good. I'm, I was really um, shocked um, at what Joanna had us do, but it was a lot of fun. It was new because I've never done ballet before, so doing parts of um, ballet and Many New Day was a lot of fun, something new to learn. This was my first time dancing on stage. Um, there's a part of me that would be all right if it was my last, but I did end up having fun once we got the dances down. So I enjoyed it, but if anything was out of my comfort zone, dancing is, uh, so. It was not my first time dancing on stage and I loved it. Yep, it was my first time dancing on stage officially for anything important. Um, my impression of the dancing, I'd say the Little do -si does we did weren't uh, weren't too bad, but to say being in the dream ballet, um, I never really thought of myself as a ballerina, but I would like to think that I represented the title well. My first time dancing uh, in a production on stage, I've done some swing dancing on stage before this. It was my first time doing uh, choreographed in a group, basically dancing on stage, yeah, and I. I loved it. I really love line dancing. Um, really was able to get into the spirit of it and hop around best I could uh, and enjoy it best I could. And I got to dance with my sister too at the end. Um, got to, or in one of the end of one of the songs. It's one of my favorite times dancing. So I was able to flip her around uh, over my over my shoulders, and that was really enjoyable. My first time was in the opera earlier this semester. So, but this was my first time in like a a real big musical. What was the second question? What did you think of the dancing? I thought Joanna did an amazing job choreographing it all and it was a little overwhelming at first trying to see how all the big numbers would come together. But once they did, it was just so much fun having, it was just like a big party. Farmer and the Cowman was my favorite dance because it was we were supposed to be having a party, and once we learned the dance, it really was like one. <laughs> I've done a little bit of dancing earlier this year, and in high school, I guess I did a little bit too. But this is the most hardcore dancing I've ever done in a show before. And for me, it was just some ballet here and there. I wish I had gotten to be in more dances, since I didn't get to be in a lot of the big dance scenes. They looked like so much fun. Joanna did such a great job with them. This was not my first time dancing on stage. There was a production of Wizard of Oz back home that I was a part of in which I played the Scarecrow, but that was literally like two box steps and a really awkward heel click because I was made of straw, so it was rather easy to make it look like a heel click. But this production had the most dancing I'd ever been a part of, and that was a bit of a challenge to learn it all. And the great part about playing the idiot is that 
in Kansas City, my dancing still didn't have to be on par because the song and the choreography emphasized how bad of a dancer Will was anyway, so it worked out great. It wasn't my first time because I've been in other musicals, but I enjoyed the dancing in this one a lot. I liked the choreography and I think it was really interesting because we pulled in a lot of different types of dance and so it made it a lot more dynamic. Uh, it was not the first time I've danced on stage. I danced on stage in Charlie Brown. So, oh yeah, that's right, okay, all right. I danced on stage in Charlie Brown. Um, I enjoyed the dancing. Even though it was really hard, I think it was really good. Uh, it was definitely a really good experience, especially the tap dancing. Yeah, this would actually not be the first time I've danced on stage, uh, but it was, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot different than any of the other dances I've done. Um, cause the other dances I've done were very uh, smaller groups and were not quite so, uh, they weren't so natural, I suppose. These were very na natural dances as if we were actually at a party. It seemed more natural, I suppose. It was really, um, it was a lot harder, I suppose, just because we had the entire cast dancing. And so, uh, so that was, um, that was difficult. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun because we got to coordinate two groups and just spin around. Bad guys don't dance. <laughs> but it was not my first time dancing, no. So I, I was really impressed by it. I thought the Dream Ballet was really well done and loved watching it and stabbing people in it. No, it was not my first time dancing on stage, but um, again, I was only in one dance number and then the encore at the end, so I didn't get to do very much, but um, I mean, it was fun. It was really good. Um, Joanna did a really good job with the choreography um, because it was fun to watch, but it wasn't too difficult for people who don't really know how to dance except for the like dancing ensemble or whatever. It was really fun. It was really, really fun dancing. Just uh, Yeah, this was uh, my first time dancing or doing anything um, <laughs> like that. I acted a little bit in high school, but just never on this scale here at Bryan. And, the dancing was a lot of fun. It was probably the most enjoyable part of this besides just working with everybody. Um, just trying something new like that and something that fun and energetic like dancing was just, it was a great experience. It was not my first time dancing on stage. I did English country dancing for Pride and Prejudice once, but this type of dancing was definitely new, but I enjoyed it a lot. It was quite fun. This so actually was not my first time dancing on stage. Uh, we did a high school production for a play called Sleeping Beauty and the Beast, and there was a dance number for that. It wasn't as well organized, though. Uh, the dancing in this was a lot harder to remember. Uh, like the do -si do part, I kept getting spun around, so I was a little slow on the do -si do um, But, you know, it was fun. It was very fun to learn all this, especially since there were so many cast members that, you know, if you mess up, it's okay. They mess up once in a while, too. It just, it really is encouraging to get to work with people that, you know, are in the same boat as you. In a musical, this was my first time, but I've been, I've been in stage movement one and two, so it's been, in some ways, um, a first musical, but I've been in the class. Uh, I thought that it was very interesting, because um, we definitely had our own choreography. Um, Mrs. Hill, she definitely put a lot of effort into making distinct choreography that was unique to this performance, so I really enjoyed that. Yes and no. Um, I've done some ballroom dancing before, the waltz and that sort of thing, um, but I've never done big musical choreography like this was, so in that respect it was my first, and it was different. It was kind of weird and it was hard getting the hang of. Um, I mean it was it was fun. It was just different. <laughs> wow. I don't know what I would change about it. Um, yeah, I mean I think I think it's I think it's wonderful. I think our department did an excellent job giving it just enough edginess to uh, keep it holy but also make it really funny. Um, I don't know, I think it's a great musical all around. Uh, 
probably would change the fight scene between Judd and uh, Curly. A little bit, beef it up a little bit more. Um, I think, honestly, I would put, I know it's really funny as it is, but I would almost add more comedy, make it more funny. If I could change one thing about the musical, um, is just that it could have lasted longer. I, I think everything went so well and we were just so tired and kind of ready for it to be over that when it was, we had no idea um, um, how different it would be and how much we would miss it. And, and though we originally weren't planning on doing Oklahoma, I think it was a perfect show for us to have fun with each other is kind of a last goodbye. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Is that bad? Well, I know that there needs to be a conflict, but the whole time I just think Laurie is making really stupid decisions. So just, we need to have a hard talk, girl, and you know, like, you need to get your priorities straight, if you know what I mean. So I'd probably change her character a little bit to be just a little smarter in making life decisions. But besides that, <laughs> probably nothing else. Nathan's line. <laughs> if I could change one thing about the musical, I don't know. I, I liked a lot of it. Maybe some of the placements where people stood and how, how things happened with the ensemble people, not the main people. Would have done it more times, would have performed it uh, a couple more times. It's, it's always a hard thing for any show to, to put that much work into it and then only show it three times. Uh, yeah, it's exhausting to, to perform it, but I would have liked maybe one or two more performances. Oh, man. Gosh, I never think like a writer. Um, I think we're just gonna have to skip that one. I don't know. I don't know if that would change anything. I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect! No, I would... <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Just, the, the, the one thing to change is do a different musical. Do a different, do a different musical. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. It was just the people, you know. People made it awesome. Lots of inside jokes that you just don't understand if you're not part of something like that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. And the way that Isaac and I just never got this one, it was my fault. Never got, we were supposed to do three, whatever they're called, this dun 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 dun, dun like two steps. We were supposed to do three two steps. The first night I did two, and the second night I did four, and finally on the last night Isaac stares at me and he goes, three. And then we did it, and I got it right. <laughs> I wish we could have run it a few more times. It's always more fun to have more performances. The ending, it just ends. And I never understood that. Like, Judd dies. Okay, that's good, I guess, because the villain's out of the picture, but like, is Curly convicted? Does he get off free? What happens? Because that trial was not legal in, in any way. And I know it's the West and the things are sketching the West, but I still like, it just ends. And they all sing, oh, what a beautiful morning. And like, there's no resolution and I do not like it. Yeah, it makes you feel good, but I was just like, no, no. Um, cause I really like the whole, like the production as a whole. I think I would change, um, Ali Hackham's character. Um, maybe make him a little bit more sympathetic because I think the way that he's portrayed a lot is like this player. And I think, I think that's what he's supposed to be, but I also think it'd be cool to see him as a more sympathetic character that people could relate to easier. I would have liked for, uh, when Caitlin and Austin, when they come out after their little escapade in the barn, <laughs> I would have liked for them to be a little more disheveled looking, but we weren't allowed. <laughs> I would probably change it to where um, Will and uh, Ado Annie got married before uh, in between the scenes as well. Um, and, and instead of them not being married at the end, I think it would have made it a little more, 
I guess less uh, less suggestive in some ways, but also it would have been a little bit of a more sure ending for them. You know, bad guys get girls too. Just saying. I mean, look at Joker and Harley Quinn. Look at Loki and every female on the planet that likes Tom Hiddleston. Look at look at Darth Vader had Padme. You know, bad bad guys can get girls too. Just saying. Just putting that out there. Probably how, well, it would change a lot, honestly. Um, uh, Rogers and Hammerstein, the way they put songs into musicals, it just kind of sits there and it has nothing to do with the story. It's just like, oh, here's the story, then we're going to sing a song real fast that doesn't really need to be there, but we're going to do it and then move on with the story. Um, I would probably have it aid the story a little bit more um and and maybe i mean i know they're classics but i would probably um make the the songs a little bit a little bit more complicated a little bit more meat to them but that's just me it's fun the way it is but you know i think i would change a little bit of the the plot lines because the only two plot lines were basically kind of two identical ones where it's one girl two guys pursuing struggles between that. That was kind of a little bit bland. Um, and then the resolution is a little bit kind of sketch of just, hey, you just sold everything you own and uh, now you, you, your friends kind of rip you off to get everything you own. Now you gotta start life anew with nothing. And while yes, it is the symbolism of, hey, giving up his old life to marry Lori, it was still like, but now what? He has his gun, I have his gun. Cordelum has his horse. <laughs> what is he supposed to do now? So it's you know, just a nonsensical ending. But um, about the musical itself, probably a little more tension, or maybe another extra scene between Judd and Curly to add some extra male fighting tension in it would have been more fun. I guess if I could change just just one thing, it would be to get a better knife for the production. <laughs> Uh, Judd, our, my friend Matt Redding, he uh, played Judd. The knife that he kept using kept breaking. And I wish that it was sturdier, but that thing just, there was, on our last production, the knife went, the blade went flying out whenever he accidentally gets stabbed with it. So yeah, I wish that that would have been a sturdier deal. It was funny though. I, yeah. I think I might change some of the line delivery, um, particular for, uh, Uh, I, um, Cord yeah, Cord Cord Elam. I would change the fact that he says, I don't have any more money to bid. Um, it's like $3 that he stops on, or $5 either way. Um, small amount in comparison to what he actually pays for a horse, um, Curly's horse. He pays $25 for Curly's horse, and yet he didn't have money to, his line was, I don't have any money, I'm all out of money, that type of thing. So I just thought that was kind of, I thought it could be worded differently, but anyway. Maybe tone down a little bit of the risqueness for a younger audience. I don't know. There's not a whole lot I would change, I really liked it. <laughs> I make, um. I'd see if I couldn't make Curly and Lori's story make sense. Because it doesn't make a lot of sense. First scene he comes on singing, uh, goes off about how he won't marry any of uh, Ann Eller's kin, including Lori. Immediately starts asking after Lori. And then the two of them just play a mutual game of hard to get for the rest of the show until he abruptly decides that he's done playing and asks her to marry him and she abruptly agrees and the whole thing's kind of going, wait, what? No. Do you guys hate each other or do you love each other? And if you hate each other, why? And if you love each other, why? Just pick a side. Whew. Um, my good buddy has always wanted to say I lost the game from stage, which I did just lose the game, which stinks. Um, but if he did not do it, then I really wanted to work it 
on stage at some point during this show, but I was definitely too afraid to, to try, so. Anything, because I didn't have a line, so I was always afraid to say anything that was going to mess up the play. I'm a background person. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. I'm pretty a bad book kind of person. So I don't know. I don't think I ever thought like maybe I should just try something here. Well, I didn't have any lines, so yeah, having lines. <laughs> um, I didn't really have any ad libs that I was too afraid to try. Um, but I know Caleb had one uh, last night. He always said that he always wanted to be able to put I lost the game in somehow in the show at any point in his uh, college career. And he did, barely anybody heard him, but it was, it was really funny. Oh goodness. Well, I actually tried it. Um, <laughs> there for my, uh, my whole time on stage, uh, at Brian, I have constantly tried to figure out a way to fit in that I lost the game on stage, and I have never had the guts to do it, and I have never actually had a good opportunity to do it, but I have to lose the game as we were all exiting the stage for one of the little ad-lib moments uh, to go do the first part of the bidding. And I said, sure would be a shame if you lost that game there, now wouldn't it? <clears throat> so I finally knocked that mar uh, thing off my bucket list. Been too scared to try it for seven shows, so got it on the eighth and last. Oh, I got it actually. It was when Caleb was dancing. All of mine are about Caleb. He was the highlight of the show for me. Um, dancing in the Farmer and the Cowman with the other, with Julia. And I always wanted to say, don't dance too, don't be too close to her, or like, don't forget you got another woman on the other side of the village, or, you know, something like that. Because they always looked like they were having a good time together. Mm. <laughs> Definitely doing my dad bow. I worked on it really hard to try to perfect it, and it was something like, but I asked Mr. B if I could do it, I asked permission beforehand. Rachel thought it was stupid and I shouldn't do it anyway. But I asked him, and Mr. B, I, I, I saw the wheels kind of turn a little bit and I saw him thinking, he's an insignificant character. Then his answer was, do whatever you want, just don't milk it too much. So I have to do it anyway. I had a couple um, that I did try, but what it would be, it was, it would have been with Brian Alderman. He and I were talking in the back one time, and we were thinking of things to just say while people were saying things, just completely random things. Uh, and it wouldn't have been an ad lib that would have fit with the story. But when everybody's saying something, I mean, you just feel like you have to say something. And so I would have said like, while people are saying, hey, let's go, um, let's be friends, and stuff like that, and like, so whenever a big group of people just start talking all at once, I'd be like, I want some tater tots, and just something completely random that doesn't make any sense. But I was always too afraid to say it out really loudly, um, just in case he heard, and got really mad at me for like ruining that section of the show. <laughs> you know what it was. Okay. The ad lib that I was too scared to try was having Nathan come out on stage with me and Shelby and flirt with Austin with us. I really wanted it to happen though. I'm really bad at ad libbing, like anything. Whenever I was in a scene with Crystal, she would just be like talking this and that and I just would never say anything. I think finally during the last, the last week of, of tech week, um, I finally added a couple like, no Curly, watch out, something like that, because I was too scared to before, but yeah, that's my, my ad-libbing experience is pretty not unexciting. Oh, there was a moment one night where, and this is something that had happened in rehearsals from time to time, after, um, in the scene where it is me, um, well, that's Will, 808, and the peddler, Allie. Allie goes into the house 
on, into Ann Eller's house. And um, Caitlin from time to time would say Allie instead of Will, because, but it somehow worked because it was part of the character when she was talking to me. And there was one night I really wanted to say, she did it on stage and nothing against her because we covered it really well. Um, and she said, Allie, and I said, Allie? And I wish I would have said something else like, ain't that that fella inside? What you talking about him for? Because that would have made it really funny. But I was really scared to try that because I didn't want to throw off the scene too much. And I was not confident in my own abilities to fix that. So I decided just to leave it at like, Allie, instead of like making something longer. But anyway. Um, I wanted to add live a lot during the um, bidding scene when they were bidding for a lot of different things, but he got on to people so often for missing lines, I felt like if I added anything, he would like just get on to me for it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> to send you out during All or Nothing <laughs> and just see Austin's face when he sees Nathan during All or Nothing. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fun, but Mr. B would have killed us, so... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I suppose that one of the ad-libs I would have wanted to do would have been uh, throwing in some more things uh, with uh, when, I, when I interacted just barely with uh, Curly and Will, just to throw in some more things there, I suppose. I don't know exactly what I would say, but I would just make it a lot more, um, more interaction, I suppose, is what it would be. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. There's several. Um, I really wanted to do the final number, like dance it, but with the knife in my gut from where I died. So, and at the end, pull it out and pass out from the pain. Um, really, honestly, there was no like line. It would. <laughs> I was scared to try a crazy walk, like a bouncy, crazy, stupid walk. Uh, it was because of Mr. B, which he probably wouldn't have minded, but it was it was more me looking real weird, because I would have looked real weird, but I had this walk that I had practiced, and, and I could have gone all out, and it would have been crazy. <laughs> I was too scared, too scared to do that in front of people. Well, with me having um, kind of two characters, I was... Uh, put on the farmer side even though Slim is a cowboy so I got the persona of Jim and he doesn't have a single line so my probably ad lib besides well single line besides you can't say anything about our women um, but besides that maybe add like a couple character lines for that so it would have been fun to, to call out in front of the cowman call the farmers some funny names like really loud would have been lots of fun during the auction I really really wanted to ad lib because my character doesn't bid for that. I joked about it off stage a bit, but one thing I really wanted to say was I'd bid my two front teeth if I had them. That was a line I really wanted to yell at one point. I just, that just funny to me. Um, that would be in The Farmer and the Cowman. One man likes to push a plow, the other likes to kiss a cow. Because my character, being a farmer, he would like to make fun of the cowman, and a cowman kissing a cow would have been funny. Caitlin's skirt. I wanted that skirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> Caitlin's skirt. I wanted the skirt up back where she did in rehearsal, but that really doesn't work with the risque thing. I didn't have any ad lib moments, so. I can't say that there was any particular moment where I felt like there could have been a line there and there wasn't that I didn't want to try out. Uh, just a major shout out to the theater department for letting me get up for one show um, without the experience that, you know, that I probably should have had being a senior. Um, it was so much fun and acting alongside some of my best friends and meeting a lot of new friends just made it worth um, every minute and more that I put into it. It's just a real fun show. It's, it was a real delightful to be able to uh, pull it all together and work with all the students. A lot of fun. I, this was, everybody knows this is just my favorite show. I'll, I'll never stop saying that. Um, so it was wonderful to get to do it, but not only to get to have that experience of doing Oklahoma and playing my dream role, um, but to do it with the people that I got to. And I just wanna thank 
of course, Crystal and, and Brian and Caleb and definitely Andrew um, for making those memories with me and being such a wonderful part of it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the Hilltop players and to Mr. B for giving me the opportunity to be in my first production with Bryan College and um, I look forward to trying out in the future and just thanks for welcoming me into the family. That's what I have to say. This whole production was just really new to me because I'm a bio major and cheerleader so I don't do theater productions. Um, but even though I wasn't one of everyone, one of the theater people, I felt so welcomed and loved when I was on the set. Um, they never talked down to me or treated me like I didn't know what I was doing. They just accepted me and loved me and um, helped me whenever I needed help. And I just felt like I was blessed to be a part of it with them. It was an honor and privilege to be able to act um, with all the people in this production, especially um, for this specific production, especially with the seniors. Um, Caleb and Crystal and Brian and um, Andrew and uh, gonna miss them a lot and uh, uh, thank y'all for making uh, the underclassmen uh, the newer additions to the theater department welcome and sharing your wisdom of how to uh, act do better acting but then also just with life caring about our lives too and um, Always keep in touch and always come back and um, uh, we're gonna miss y'all guys. But it was it was a great show to be able to do with y'all and before y'all are gone. So I think everyone did a good job. The end. I think I'd just like to say thank you to the seniors, you know, Crystal and and Caleb and Andrew and even Brian, even though this was his one and only show, it was still a lot of fun to do it with them. I'd like to say thank you to, to those three mainly because they helped me a lot throughout the year um, and taught me some things that I, I, what I didn't know, some techniques, and um, it was just, it was really great working with them. It was a good show to go out on. Uh, had a good run while I was here. I didn't, I wasn't crazy about the thought of doing Oklahoma at first. I was more partial towards Sound of Music. And uh, I already, I'm, I'm not as, I'm a bad theater person. I'm not particularly into musicals, but I had so much fun performing this show and it ended up being my favorite show that I've done during my time here. And just a really, really special way to go out, uh, getting to perform as the lead in the number one musical in America was just such a cool opportunity. So I appreciated it. Yes, it was when I came into rehearsal and Mr. B said, late as usual, and I was actually right on time. And then he said, well, <laughs> I'll say this about Crystal. She, what is it, she likes to, be efficient with her time, so she always gets here on time. Thanks, Mr. B. <laughs> we love you, Mr. B. The end. I think I'd like to say that uh, Caleb Julien is an outstanding character and an outstanding man and friend. Um, and I remember my first time doing anything in theater. Uh, I started doing it simply for the hopes of being able to see Rachel more um, and hopefully being able to maybe one day kiss her on stage, which <laughs> happened. Um, and so my dreams have been completed, but my first time in the theater, I remember uh, it was a scene for Caleb's directing class and uh, Grace and I were his two actors and he said, and, uh, gosh, I sucked. I mean, I'm still not that good, but Man, like Caleb's patience with me, um, he <laughs> he gave, gave me as many tips as he could, and just like a like as as a father trying to watch his son ride a bike and fall every single time, but think he was doing well, just the, <laughs> the patience of a warrior, um, kind of guided me through, gave me some pointers, um, helped me come out of my shell a little bit, 
um, on stage, which honestly, I don't know if he knows this, but um, contributed some toward um, doing the, the worship leadership and things that I do on the worship team uh, for chapels, doing things on stage, and kind of honestly, just my social bubble in general, kind of that, that time, that, that first time and then kind of every time after that, um, that I've just gotten to be with Caleb in anything theater. He's, he's just always been an encouragement and uh, I've been, I mean, it's really just, just had an impact on my life here at the school and uh, in any of the things in the theater department that I've been involved with. Um, and I know that he's been a great friend of my fiance and so I'll be forever grateful for him. And uh, I was glad to be in his last show with him. I really enjoyed uh, this last being able to be in Caleb Julian's last show. I mean, he and the other seniors that are leaving, it's been a lot of fun acting with them, but Caleb Julian and I uh, have been acting together since we were five um, back at our old church's place. And so to being able to start, basically start his career and then end um, his last play at college with him, I thought that was really cool. Um, it was, it's just phenomenal the way that we get close. Um, he really is a good family. I think, and there's a lot of fun that we can have now that I'm closer with several of the cast members. It's just, it brings me close to them and my friendships get deepened in that way. Uh, and that's true for how it was with, even with Caleb, I was able to become even better friends with them through it. Um, so I would think it was a really great show. I really enjoyed it. I'm really happy to be, even though I came in two months late. Man, it was not the show that I was expecting at all when I started this semester. Um, but it was just so much fun to be a part. It was my first musical ever. And it was really fun to be a part of something that big. And um, it was so great watching uh, my best friends do their last show in such a fun way. And Caleb and Drew and Crystal just did such a fantastic job. And I think it really pulled out some of their awesome qualities as actors. Um, just especially Crystal, the way that she uses moments on stage that other people might pass up, like in um, the auction scene when Judd comes out one night during rehearsal, he called her Aunt Lori, and some people might just move on, and oh, it was just a mistake, it's just a dress rehearsal, we'll fix it another time, but she goes, you want to run that by me again? <laughs> I just love the way Crystal doesn't pass up moments on stage. Uh, they're just really genuine with her, and I love that about Crystal. I'm going to miss that so much. This was such a fun show. I loved being in it. The cast was so wonderful. Um, it was just such a fun process. Everybody did such a great job, and I'm so glad I got to be a part of it. I just want to say that this production has honestly been the most fun I've ever had of a st I have ever had on a stage in my entire acting career, if you can call it that. Um, but one of my favorite moments that happened on stage was after the curtain closed last night. It was a very emotional time for all of us. Um, well, for most of us, I guess. Um, for those of us who had been really close to the seniors, um, it was a very emotional time for me because that was the last time I was ever gonna be on that stage with them in a production. And when the curtain closed last night, after we had all screamed um, the final word, the final yell, um, that was a great moment in itself, but after that happened, I knew it was over. And once that curtain closed, there were so many tears that were on stage. Um, and I can remember hugging Caleb in particular, just bawling, because I knew it, that would be the end of my time with him. And um, it, it was difficult, but it was honestly just one of those moments that I don't regret, that there were a lot of tears on that stage, and I'm very thankful that the curtain was closed and that nobody saw it because it was, um, we needed that moment away from everyone in order to um, handle what was going on. And it was, it was very difficult, very emotional, but it was honestly one of my favorite things because it showed how big of a family we are in the Hilltop Players and how, mu how many bonds we have with one another. And it's just something about theater, putting someone on a stage that when everybody gets together, you're gonna get close to people. It's just the nature of the business. And it's something that I've really enjoyed about being a part of this production in addition to the other ones that I've been blessed to be a part of. I just, I mean, I want to say thank you because I, I hadn't been in a musical for a while, but it, I really enjoyed it. So being back on stage and being back in front of an audience was just a really neat,
cool experience and I, I don't know, just thank you to everyone who's a part of it. Hmm. I just really enjoyed this musical. It was a lot of fun. I loved our set and our costumes. I just, I loved everything about it. Uh, Caleb, Julene, it was awesome getting to act with you one last time, and I wish we had a few more go-rounds at it, but I loved doing our duet together, man. Like, that was just so cool getting to end it on that note with, literally with that note, well, when we found the notes, but end it on those notes with you, and I'm um, going to miss you and wish you well in the future. This is my first time really being in a theater production at Bryan as I'm a freshman. I was in the opera, but it's different than the Hilltop Players and working with Mr. B and all the real theater people. Um, and it was a lot of a lot of fun. I was a little intimidated by the idea at first, but um, everyone was so fun and so welcoming. And Mr. B was uh, really fun to work with. Uh, and I, I actually want to get a lot more involved in the theater theater department now, even just acting stuff, which I never thought I would really be interested in, because again, I'm more of a, a musical person, more of singing, um, but yeah, so here's the three more years, and it's going to be great. <laughs> I would just really like to thank the uh, Hilltop players and just everyone involved with this, um, because this is my second production here, I'm only here for three semesters, and you guys have really been like a family to me. You guys were the first group that really meshed, that really um, let me into, the, into your group with a misanthrope. And so for continuing that on with this play with basically the entire theater and music department, um, it was just a really great um, bonding experience, for lack of a better word, just of this family that we have as, a Hilltop, as the Hilltop players. And um, the seniors, I've only known you for a year, but it's been amazing working with you guys, especially Caleb, Julene, beloved. Um, <laughs> you've really kind of served as a mentor and helping me adjust to the, new, the newness of working in theater and just here at Bryan in general. So I'd just like to thank you all um, just for accepting me into your fold if for what limited time I am here. So, um, As my first musical, it was quite fun to see the mesh of different people, people who are really good at acting, people who are really good at singing, and people who are really good at dancing, and how we just kind of all came together and collaborated and made something really, really cool. And that last, that last yell on the last night was really, really memorable. It was really cool. Uh, just to uh, Caleb Julin, Brian Alderman, Drew, Crystal, you're all really great actors, really great people, and I'm just so blessed to be able to work with you, but all of you, and I'm glad I got to work with you, Caleb, and you, Drew, more than once, you know, one last time for this, because, you know, you're just all really influential people in my life, and it's going to be different here without you, uh, but you taught me a lot, and I would, I'm honored to carry on the theater torch here at Brian. so, yeah. Thank you all for whoever is watching this. Um, I know I enjoyed being in this production as my last production. Um, it was a great time for all the seniors to go um, together and come together and uh, act through this. We enjoyed it and we hope to see what comes next. Not really. It was just fun to work with everybody and see how encouraging they all were. Only that as far as, uh, as far as Andrew and Crystal and Caleb are concerned, I would say that, um, I would say that finale, that, that reprise that we all sing right before the curtains close, that was a uh, fantastic note to end their time with the Hilltop players on. And Brian <laughs> yelled at him that night uh, to shut up. That's embarrassing. Don't want that going off the video. Yow. Yow! I tell you what my favorite part was getting to um, be in a fight because I'm never, never usually in those in real life anyway. So that was pretty fun. Stage fight. It actually does. No, it because doesn't. He just sold his. He sold his horse. But everyone else has horses that they could let him borrow. No, we'll we'll drag it ourselves. <laughs>
Actually, that's mine. There's one. Just gonna have to edit this one out. <laughs> um. Hmm. I don't know. There was something. It's coming to my brain. The ad lib? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really hard question. I'm stumped. I can think about that. <laughs> you fail. I fail. I would make me the star. Just kidding. Um. I really don't know. <laughs> Can we come back to that one? Okay. There we go. That's a wrap. Cool. You can edit all this out, right? I will be doing that, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Favorite line. Man, what are some good lines? Fill your behind so full of buckshot. <gasps> my favorite though but yeah what's the line I'll just say that what is the line when Karn says to Ali Hackham if you something I'll fill your behind so full of buckshot you'll walk like a duck for the rest of your life or something like that. okay <laughs> um okay now I gotta pretend like you didn't just say that and I just thought of it um don't you know what you're doing no I don't some film student <laughs> <laughs>